What did I say? The Justice League. Oh no, bitch, I see the Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, behind, next to that, and then over here. Star Wars. Do you know what? The Star Wars one? I have the exact same one Jabba printed for me. It's gorgeous. It's fabulous. Wow. What's that Justice League thing? That's um, from the movie, The Justice League. Never saw it, believe it or not. Oh my God. It's all of the, it's Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, oh. Aquaman, and uh, Cyborg. Oh. But uh, Vinny gave it to us because, you know, he works in a movie theater and we had it professionally mounted so that we could put it on the, on, over here in the man cave. You know, I got professionally mounted once and it was also in a man cave. Oh. Interestingly <laughs> enough. By Superman. By, if only. So yeah, comic books, superheroes, it's a weird time, isn't it? Um, yeah, so what happened, girl? You wanted to say you were heavy in your heart about something. My heart was heavy over the loss of Chadwick Boseman. Who played Black Panther. Yeah, I, I heard last night and I almost started crying. Well, girl, I guess it was Wakanda not forever. What kind Temporary. of bullshit? Wakanda cancer, aga. No, you know what? Oh! <laughs> What, wasn't he in that Whoa. Marvel movie, Black Cancer? <laughs> no. Too soon? Too soon, right? Too soon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, by the time this comes out, he would have been two weeks gone. So, you know, Wakanda forever, Chadwick. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, listen, we all have crosses to bear, baby. You know, I'm sad about it and things and whatever. I've got my own personal struggles to go through, okay? Um, so yeah, you do. Excuse me. Yeah, you do. You want me more specific, or are you just being a can? No, I'm saying you've been going through some shit. Yes, I have. So I wasn't going to talk about my personal issues, but since someone's having nine personal minutes issues. of tech difficulties, you know what? Let me just bring it. Okay, so viewers. You know, we were gonna take a hiatus anyway, fine. During the hiatus, we had to take an extra hiatus because I had my appendix out. Unexpectedly, I got appendicitis. And you know, I don't talk about my, my, my personal drama, but oh, it's been, actually it was a week ago right now. So last, whatever, a week ago, plus a day, I was just feeling kind of not right. Oh, here's Miss Honey speaking and not right. Should I let her in or should I make her wait? Make her wait? Let her come in. No, let her Should come I? in. Should I? No. All right, nobody wants to hear about my appendectomy. Yeah, we do, we nobody do. Nobody wants to hear about it. Did you turn green? Bitch, I turned blue. No. Really? No, I didn't turn um, any colors. weird colors. No colors, colors, colors. I was, um, like my stomach hurt. And I felt like not right for like two or three days, but I was like, well, you know, let me see what happens. And I'm up here in fucking, you know, Hooterville. So I, did I let the bitch in? I guess I did. Yeah. So I, I drove myself. Hello. To, hello, darling. How hello. You? Very well, very well. Let's see the t-shirt. Oh, um, I'm wearing the Plaza Queen t-shirt. Yes. Which I happen to absolutely love. I do too. I think it's so cute. And that's like the real, that's like Queens Plaza. That's how, that's the animation. Or did you flip it? Actually, it was Miss, Miss Brian Mills did it. She flipped it. She Fabulous. Flipped it. It's, it's her picture. So yeah. We give her the credit. But yeah. I just absolutely love it. I love my t-shirt. Now, please tell the viewers where you got it and where they can get theirs. Oh, yeah. This isn't just, you know, you know, fierce high fashions in New York City uh, that I'm serving the children. This is actual uh, merch. This is merchandise for homework and fire chicote. You can go to the link in the, um, uh, uh, right below, and it'll take you to Teespring. And yeah, you can buy homework merch. I actually also got myself a homework mug. A Fabulous. homework mug, honey. When you want all that piping hot tea, you have it in that and mug. Exactly. This is going to be where I have where I have my, my cafe con leche and my piping yes. hot tea. Honey, this is my homework mug. What up? Now Look. get it to, get it to Miss Booby shirt. Yes. Homework. Also from teespring.com slash workshop. 
Yes, yes. Learn it. Learn it, darling. Yes, that's fabulous. And Matenga, you haven't seen this? I've gotten the You've Been Learnt t-shirt. I love it. So viewers go I to- I love it. We're, we're legit. We've got merch. Also, the cup says Learn It on the back of it, too. Oh, oh fabulous. Work. Yeah, the mug is so cute. It's a really high quality. I'm really, I'm so happy with it. I do love a high quality mug. Oh, For all your piping hot way, tea. Hello, everyone. Hello, it's good to see everybody. You too. Know. Hale and hearty and, girl, and, was, and healthy. I was about to launch into my appendectomy story, girl. Yeah. Now your appendectomy, uh, uh, um, what's, what's this? Your appendectomy. Honey, if I had something more glamorous I don't know, the done, chin is looking very tight. The chin's looking very tight today. Only, I don't know. The only tight thing about me, bitch, it was eight days ago. Trust me, surgery wow. recovery takes a lot longer, I've read. Um, no, if I had Did something you lose done, weight? Did I lose weight? Let's say it moved around a little. So what happened was okay. I was, oh, oh, wait a minute. Hello, viewers. This is homework. I'm Mike Diamond. This is Miss Matinga. This is Booby. Hello. So like eight days ago, I was feeling kind of kind of not right. My stomach was hurting. I was feeling like a little bit bloated, you know, and uh, not like quarantine bloating like we all have, but like uncomfortable, like, hmm. Mm. So I drove myself to the little walk-in thing here with just my cell phone and my keys and some chapstick and my Altoids. Thinking, oh, I'll be back in an hour. I told the cat I'll be back in an hour. Bitch, they admitted me. I had appendicitis. And- uh, they know? Oh my God, girl, they fucking inject you with this dye and you drink an oral suspension dye and they put you in the CAT scan and it showed up all kinds of things. But yeah, so my appendix had to come out and I'm sitting there in this Hooterville hospital. Now, it showed up all kinds of things, not just your appendix. That was just the tip of the iceberg. Well, I went back all later. This other stuff too. I went back later and read my lab reports. And I want to say that... Um, you know, the face is young and sitting, but bitch, the innards are old and rotted. <laughs> I'm like, oh, bitch. <laughs> oh I am a corpse. Yes. But, um, well, <laughs> yes, the face is sitting. Uh, yeah. So it was a week ago today. They gave me the actual surgery. And, and I like, like, you guys, like, I'm fine. I'm fine. But like, and I'm asking these doctors, like, you know, what's up? What's going to happen? And I had no cell service. And, like, I had to get someone to feed the cat. Da, da, da. And in like, all honesty, we did gag because we couldn't get to you because yeah. you, were, you were nowhere near either one of us. No cell service, no Wi-Fi. And no cell service. I mean, I was gasping. Here's a little pro tip. When you're in the hospital and they ask you how bad is your pain on a scale of 1 to 10, the first time they ask you, Say something like two, like, oh, I'll soldier through it. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. The next time they ask you, you'd be like, you know, it's a, it's a little worse than I thought. That's when they give you the morphine, okay? Because if you say right away that you're gasping, they're like, oh, this is a drug-seeking junkie. If you're able to hold right. off for an hour. Now, this is coming from a drug-seeking junkie. If you're able right. to hold off an hour and be like, oh, yeah, you know what? It's a little harder than I thought. That's when they give you the morphine. And let me tell you, morphine, bitch, you be feeling morphine, okay? But so- Well, thank goodness, because I, I've never had an appendicitis, but like, I can imagine that you, the pain that you were in, that like you're it, very stoic. Yeah, like it wasn't excruciating, um, but I know like, a, what time is it? Like 2.16? So a week ago, right now, I was drugged, unconscious, probed and manhandled, and then they did the surgery. Trust. But so, but I'm fine, oh, I'm bruised, I'm bruised, but I'm okay. So your, your appendicitis, did it burst? Did it actually no, burst? No, 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 they took it out preemptively. They okay, because if they it did. burst, that could, be, that could be bad. No, they took it out, they took it out. I just want to say uh, that poor John, Johnny, gave me a call and he was so concerned and he was like, what do we do, girl? Like, do we get in the car? And do we drive up there? And do we like, and I was like, that old hag has Roger and Steven 20 minutes away. He's on good drugs. Fuck her, she'll be <laughs> fine. I'm not taking a four hour drive. They probably may not even let us see her because there's weird rules in place. 
hurts and shit. Right. I was like, listen, if tomorrow the surgery doesn't go good, we'll jump in the car and we'll get to her right, you know, to slap her in the face right at the end. In point of fact, Roger and Stephen were in the city, okay? And I was up here. uh, I was up here in Hickory Farms, bitch. But you know, but I, I know that they rushed up there to see you because I was I was going back and forth with Roger. Well, and they, I know that she went and saw you. They, they they drove me home, and I was you know I, I was I was toughing it out, and I got someone to take care of the cat, and it was fine, and and all that. Um, but so I'm fine, viewers. I'm fine. Listen, so you have your but, but it was touch and go. Miss Thing, I'm almost it was 40. touch and go it's for a moment. Like I'm just gonna bounce back, bitch. You what? What? Do you know what else, Girl, guys? You- it was honey for you that's it was like a high risk pregnancy like you yeah. could have like given birth to either like some type of abomination booby i think oh, we've boobies. offended miss booby i think we- out. you know i never like we are uh, oh I never but, liked to but like you could have given birth to like an abomination again or you mean, like you mean after homework yes this yeah, abomination yes. we gave birth to by the way, little, I also got the T-shirt that said, um, uh, "This bodega is choice," mm-hmm. I, uh, which is uh, I was so looking forward to my my T-shirt. But instead of coming triple extra large, which is I like a little bit of a roominess, it came just a standard large and it's too small. Yeah. So uh, um, I got so I got a face mask as well, and I'm gonna give them to Donna just as a little because I'll be like, "Here, Donna, you can sleep in this," and then here's a this bodega is choice face mask. And uh, correct because me if I'm for, wrong. Yeah. You got the, oh, Miss Honey, there she's back. You got the Feed the Children shirt in a 5XL? I got the Feed the Children shirt as well in a 5XL. Now I'm kind of wishing I had gotten it in a 6XL because that's as big as you could get it. What happened, baby? I hit the leave button by accident. Oh, okay, Mom. So you weren't offended by my near death experience? No, not at all. Uh, no, not but, at all. But I was just saying how I got the Bodega is Choice shirt, but it came way too small. So I'm going to give it to Donna so she can sleep mm. in it. I got her a face mask that says this Bodega is Choice as well. That is Lovely. our, um, that is also part of our merchandise. That's so I'm fabulous. just going to give it to Donna and then I'll just order myself another one. Because when I told Donna that we had a face mask that said this Bodega is Choice. She, she lived. Li- she lived. She was like, oh no, no, I got to have it. I got to have it. I was like, don't worry, I'll get you one. I'll get you one. Because you know, Donna gets it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Donna all the, gets all the it. cool kids get it. All the cool yeah. kids get it. Yes. Uh, now I don't want to turn this into a infomercial for our merch store. But which still, is, honey, purchase it, it's cute. It's cute. Look at Miss yeah. Booby's shirt and Miss yeah. Miss Honey's shirt. I don't want to turn into an infomercial for teespring.com slash workshop where you can get all your fashion needs met. <laughs> um, and I want to move away from my, my surgical intervention story, which you know, I won't say that it was touch and go because touch and go is just my hookups. Trust, but just it was sh- shaky. Just touch and go. Do you know how sometimes, and then we'll get to a topic. Do you know how sometimes you're like asleep and like an idea comes to you like that you're completely lucid and you remember it when you wake up? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know why I really did think you were going to say, you know how sometimes, you know, you, uh, you find yourself and you're a slee stack. <laughs> you know, like, and then when you wake up, you remember it. And you remember yeah. it. It's like, where is she headed with this? I'll tell you where I'm headed. I yesterday I bought the um, Dua Lipa remix album, right? Which is actually kind of good. It's and I cute. Guess I played the whole thing a few times. And I was going about my business, and then like one of the songs came up in my my dream, but the lyrics were changed. And I swear to God, this is what it was in my dream. <clears throat> You're knocked up. Don't ask how. You've got six raw loads in you now. Flush away. You big sow, you're a dumb cum collecting cow. I don't know why and that if came. You don't wow, you <laughs> dancing on the ceiling. Ow! So like the whole thing came Ow. Like one chunk. <laughs> wow! Cow! It like Ow. one. It came to me in like one chunk in my sleep, and I was like, wow! And then I remembered it when I woke up. Isn't that weird? Interesting. You've well, got a we- daft mind. A daft, a daft mind for daft. sure. Yeah. Daft. <laughs> Absolutely. So, guys, what are we talking about today? <laughs> Should I pull up some of the questions that we were oh, thinking of discussing? One, one, yeah. one, one last thing, though. Can I just yeah. mention one last thing? Booby, I notice, and it looks absolutely beautiful, by the way, the framed 
Justice League poster behind you. Fucking awesome. What is it? I absolutely, top? I'm living. You can't save the world alone. But is Diana on? I see Flash. She's she's in I, there. She is in there. Yeah, she I looks love fabulous. it. And you had it professionally framed up. I see. She's super cute. Is that now? And the one behind you is that Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. And then over there is Star Wars. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, you know what? You're really you're dressing that room up. Nice. It's really yeah. coming together. It's it's my man cave. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes you throw up that imagery that you love. But you know exactly. what? The, the grown up thing is don't just use some double tape and stick it up. Right. You, you get it framed like a grown up. Exactly. Which I love. I love I'm getting, I, I have also Return of the Jedi that I just, I just got, well, I just shouldn't say just got, I got about two years ago that I need to get it mounted and framed. Mm. Speaking Girl. of mounted and framed. Hello, honey. But enough about Jeffrey Epstein. Oh. I <laughs> So the topic today, oh, he wasn't framed. He was guilty. He was. He was guilty. But he was mounting for sure. And, and then he got hung. So what the hell are we talking about? Oh, yeah. So we are going to do a dive into Reddit, into gay Reddit. Uh, so we went on to Reddit, uh, on to, uh, you know, I think the forum was. Ask gay men. Ask gay men questions. <laughs> okay. And, and I, I want to say that it was a little bit of guys trying to hook up and just saying sexual shit so that guys would say sexual, right, sexual shit. But back. isn't that against their, like, you know, mission statement? Maybe, but, like, one guy's like, oh, I've never had a, a blowjob. What is it like? And a hundred guys are like, oh, I love to suck on that head. Yeah. La, 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 la. And the, 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 uh, you work the tongue this way. And, oh, I could do it all day. And it's just a, some guy trolling you know, right. to get sexual responses. Right. How'd that work so out for I, you? So I, so I wrote my response back to him and I was like, listen, th th slip into my DMs. But one, one interesting question, it's kind of run of the mill and it's kind of obvious, but I was like, if you don't know how, I can explain that to you for sure, which is how do you store your safe, your sex toys? How do you store your sex toys? And what huh. I do, I'm not a big sex toys guy, but I got one or two things. I got Big Papa from you, Michael. You gave me Big Papa, which is a ginormous black dildo with a handle. <laughs> with a handle. With a handle. For leverage, yes. darling. For leverage. That you could you could you could inflict like pain on somebody with this. Much better. Even, much yeah, better. Much better. <laughs> and I've got and I've got a couple other things. I've got like a you know, a little, you know, toy that sucks you off. I forget what those things are. It looks like a flashlight. Uh, uh, it, it's a, a flashlight. A flashlight. By the way, it does not work. It does not work, by the way. So anyway, but this is what I do. If whenever you use your sex, I always like to, if I'm not playing with a partner, I like to use water-based lubricant. If I'm playing with a partner, I like to use silicone lubricant. When you play with a partner, that silicone-based lubricant is really hard to get out of the bed, the sheets, it's hard to wash off. So with sex toys, I like to use a plain water-based lubricant and that's what I play with. And then afterward, honey, soap and water, you wash everything. Don't just put them away, you wash everything up in soapy hot water. You dry everything carefully with a clean towel. Why and do you I wash it? Because it's covered in microscopic feces, body fluid, blood, and, and other- and if you used it when it, without washing it, you could get sick. It, it, right, you could, not only could you get sick, but if you used it and then you didn't wash it and you used it on someone else, it's disgusting. Right, they it's would disgusting. charge you for that cab ride. It's disgusting and not only could you get them, <laughs> you could, it, it's a way to transmit disease. So you right. wash with soapy water, you dry them well, and then I keep them in a canvas bag in a drawer. Very that. Interesting. Speaking of infectious disease, I just got this book, which I'm reading, called The End of October, because nothing calms my anxieties right now than books about global pandemics, I just want to say. It's very interesting. Right. Yeah. You have, Miss Honey, you have been on a, on a thing, and you've been like reading so many books about pandemics. I, I love it. It's interesting. Like Station Eleven, and it's fabulous. I'm reading... 
Will my cat eat my eyeball? Uh, I love my her. Caitlin Dowdy. She's great. She's so fierce. She's fucking fierce, girl. Get into her video about Waco. It's so interesting. Also, you know what? If you're one of the, you know, and I think this probably goes with a lot of people. If you're one of these people that has questions about death and dying, she answers them in this funny, charming, matter-of-fact way. But that, extremely detailed and knowledgeable. But but extreme well, because she's a mortician. She's a she's also wow. online. Her um her thing online is ask a mortician, and it's amazing. But she but yeah, and she's gonna tell you the truth. But she also demystifies it in such a way that it takes some of the anxiety away. Hmm. It really does. It, and I, I like her sense of style. Her on. style is good. Oh, honey, she rocked those bangs, honey. Rocking those holly bangs. holly bangs. And I bet you she has sex toys in a canvas bag somewhere. Somewhere. Trust. So that was Somewhere. one part. Like, oh, that's an easy one. But that's important. Wash your toys, baby. Wash your but toys. But wasn't the question like, where do, you, where do you keep them? It was, how do you store your sex toys? I usually just kick them out of the house and say, go home. Trust. Trust. Shit. I've had sex with your toy and your emotions. Now get out. I don't have any. Uh, they're, it's not really my thing, um, but you know, I guess- You're on top, so you gotta have toys. You are? You gotta have you? toys. Those, what? Honey, those fisting bottoms, you gotta, you gotta have accoutrement, honey. If you don't have toys, they're gonna have toys, and you better know how to act around their toys. Okay, and then like you look at them like, oh, another one who's ballooned. Oh, another one who I'm gonna use like a oh. Muppet. Oh, girl. Anyway. My, uh, my, I have a, I have my dear friend. Should I even mention her name? Yep. Okay. So Dylan was telling me the other, the other day. Maybe we'll beep, we'll bleep it out if it's too much. Maybe we will, and maybe we won't. But she's dating, she, she's dating this very charming, handsome bear, who is into all types of sex. All types and, of. Sorry, uh, one of broke the up things, for a second. Say it again. All types of. All types of sex play. Okay. And so she said that she, she gave him. She gave him horizon the other day. And I was like, what's a horizon? And he said, she said, she said, a horizon is when you stick your fist in their butt and then you go like this. Like like this? Yeah. You closed hand. Uh-huh. And then you open the hand and in scoop it around. Inside? Inside. That's called a horizon. Inside. So I, you no, fist honey, like this. I think that's just, called a colonoscopy. And it, it, while she was doing it, I was like, oh. <laughs> well, and I was like, girl, like you gotta be careful. Even me, but that I am an experienced fisting top and I've had my hand open within a man. Uh, 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 actually, I, I could see my fingers coming from his, his belly, but you have to be very careful. She was like, honey, he smiled and loved it. And Kiki and Karen. You had him smiling. She and then I was like, girl, like you sound serious, honey. Then she brought out the bag. She brought out her canvas bag of sex toys. And girl, it made my little ring canvas bag of sex toys look, look like some, dink. yeah, look like somebody's lunch, you know, lunch box that they take to school. Oh my like God. Like there's made my, like there's a tuna sandwich in there and some hot soup. So she made him smile and then she looked at his face. Trust. Yeah. Oh. Miss, Miss Booby, do you care to take a crack at this question? What question? The one we've been talking about for 20 minutes. I don't have any, I, I don't really have any toys. I'm not into them, okay. personally. All right. So, but I mean, in the past, I've used them just to please the partner. And I'm wary right. of someone that has too many toys, bitch. I'm like, you know what? Because I'm all about that human connection, you know? Like, if I'm... Right. Like if I'm good, <laughs> you're knocked up. <laughs> Don't ask how. Um, <laughs> all right, listen. Let's move on, Booby. What is your question that you dug up? Yeah, because you must lie to us about a human connection. Well, I just want to say, I, move on. No, wait a minute. I picked the exact yes. girl. I picked the exact right time to go celibately, because 2020 is the year of caftans and no touching. So I think I timed yeah. it right. And you know what? Yeah. I'll tell you what my post-surgical recovery has been like these last six days or whatever. I'm eating whatever the fuck I want, and I don't 
fucking care. Hell yeah. If I get fat, I get fat. Anybody yes. gonna see me? And ha. Bitch, I'm thinking juicy. What? If what? you don't wanna <laughs> see me, you know. Fucking with nobody. Fucking with no Ow. weighing 300 pounds. <laughs> Ow. Ow. <laughs> Word <laughs> up. Word up. Girl, you so fat that when you sit on them, they go, ow. 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 Yo, there was a hot thread on Facebook, and I'm not a Facebook queen, but there was a hot thread about what's your best um, your mama jokes. There was some good ones. <laughs> your mama's so old when she queefs, tumbleweeds come out. <laughs> <laughs> I did my old standby. You, your mama's so fat when she step on a scale and said to be continued. And then Ooh. I was going to do one that was maybe insensitive to this moment and maybe in general, which is um, your mama's so black. <laughs> your mama's so black and her teeth so yellow when she smiles, she looks like a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Darling. Darling. Well, I didn't, Darling. I didn't post. I didn't post it. But it was funny. But you just said it. <laughs> because this is it? A, because much like Donna's boyfriend, this is an open forum, darling. I trust. I All right, Booby, what's your question, darling? Oh, it's by the way, that hurt. That hurt my stitches so bad. Go on, Booby. Ow, ow, ow. I want to. I want to ask my gay best friend if he would like to have sex with me, but I'm afraid of disrespecting him. What should I do? And that's so, on Ask Gay Men? Yes. Ooh. So I, w I went into the answers for that question because I was like, this question sounds weird to me. And I did figure out that the, the person posing the question, whose name was rather amorphous, was a cisgendered Woman. female. Yeah. So, so it's not like I'm, I'm a straight guy or even a gay guy asking, I want to ask my best gay friend. It's a straight woman asking a gay guy for sex. Those are some choppy ass waters. Those are choppy waters. Yeah. Because you could be bi and it could work out. But right. like if you know your friend is gay, like gay. Why, you just put him in that, why are you putting him in the position to, to have to say no to right. you? You know, and like and Oh, it's a bad like, idea. Listen, you guys are gay and you're my best friend. I don't want no sex. No. I don't want no sex. I'm reading one of the comments that they've said and it's shady. Bring it. They got shady with her, yeah. Just because you are pansexual doesn't make him any less gay. Please tell me this is a troll. You are next level narcissistic and it's extremely disrespectful to him to ignore his sexual orientation. Not to mention it's going to really make your friendship awkward. Trust yep. me, fucking your friends never works out long term. My advice, don't. Seriously, it's up you would even consider it. You sound very entitled. You find him attractive and want to have sex with him and don't care who he is attracted to. You only care about your needs and your orientation, ignoring his. Wow, that pretty much lays it out. But, yeah. so, but what are your personal feelings? Like, you could be a gay man who does not consider themselves bisexual. Right. That doesn't mean that you wouldn't tumble into bed with a woman. It's Me? Certainly, not you particularly. Oh, right, I'm right. I'm just saying, you know, it happens. I remember... Um, not Heather, but she remember Heather had a beautiful friend who was a Robin. Stripper. Robin. Robin. Robin used to she used to get the gay boys all the time, darling. Yep. She, yeah. There was a lot them. of drugs involved. But she was also she was also a living Jessica Rabbit. It de but you know what though, it, that doesn't matter because you could be the finest woman on the planet. If I'm strictly dickly, I'm strictly dickly. I don't care how fucking drugged up I am. I don't care how. And it's not a slam on you. It's right. just, that's not that's my tea. Thing. That's not my tea. That's the thing. I think if you are like like in that spectrum where you know that your friend might fall, you know, fall into bed with a woman, then I guess maybe it's okay to ask. But if you know that they're definitely, you know, gay. identified, you're just going to put them in an awkward position. I'm told, like, I am gay identified i am not bisexual but i have slept with women and and uh, and people that were ftm so it's not out of the realm of possibility but ftm but, is still but, gay but sex because they're personal, men 
FTM is still gay it's sex still gay because sex. they're men. It's still, You're a man, it's they're still men. gay sex. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm saying is that, like, it's not out of the possibility that it could happen. But my personal rule, anyway, has always been no sex with the sisters. Like, if you're a good friend, I'm not going to, because I, I think I've sex, never done it. Yeah, never. it ruins it. Yeah, it ruins it. it I, I, I think it, you know, it might work out, but more than likely, you now have ruined the friendship. Hookups yeah. are like whatever; they're so easy to come by. Who cares? Friendships are fucking rare. I mean, and you, friendships. And listen, do you want your lover to be your best friend? Sure, mm -hmm. but he usually doesn't start out that way. No. You know what I mean? Like you know, your your best friend does not end up being your lover usually. Mm -hmm. I, I've um, I've I, you know, I have friends now who originally were supposed to be hookups, and then it turned out that they just it it, it, it turned out that we were just better as sisters, and it wasn't going to work out. But we came real close to to boffing. But but the but journey then, but from Bunny, hookup, but you know, listen, Bunny is so easy. charming. She, Lady Bunny is amazing. She's so amazing with, the, with that dry ass pussy. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, dry ass pussy. Dap. Oh, her Dap. flotilla. Dap. So funny. It's so good. But the journey from hookup to friend is much easier to navigate and much more common. Like, how many yeah. people are you friends with that, like, you first met them, you know, for a shing a ling a ling long for a right. hookup, and then you just became friends? Like, I have so many people, like, not that I'm a slut, but I have so many people like that. That like and maybe first, you hooked up once. Hooked up then, once or dated or, you know, yeah. a little bit or whatever. But then you're like, oh, no, this is a friendship. Right. Because, well. This is a friendship. You know, not to make this about me and too personal, but once I've hooked up with you a couple of times, eh, that's kind of it. We could be friends, you know, but like, I can't, I can't continue to like be intimate with people that I know and like and respect. I once I like that. you, I can't fuck. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. That's I much cannot, more concise. Once I like you, I cannot fuck you. Yeah, that, you know what? We're going to put that on merch. Once I like you, I can't, I can't fuck, fuck you. you. Yes. Hello. Hello. Teespring.com slash workshop for our latest. Hello. Hello. It's brilliant. Actually, Just what brilliant. I, I, I can't wear it because it's too small. I'm going to give it to a friend, but I can show it to you at least. Look, Look at this bodega's, bodega's, bodega's choice. choice. Yes. Bodega's Little glingo choice. action. like that? Look at this bodega is choice. Honey, that is a fucking phrase to have on a t-shirt. <laughs> but irregardless, bringing it back around to that question, I'm going to say that um, whoever you are, girl, leave your homosexual alone. And if you can't just be friends with him, then move on. Right. Ma -ma -ma move on. That'd be like one of us. Let me, let's, let's be uh, in, put ourselves in this person's shoes for a second. Being attracted to someone you can't have for reasons of orientation. Now, if I had a straight friend that I was super duper into and I was feeling the vibe and I'm gonna like ride, you know, Captain Long John, Dr. Feel Good, whatever, but there was no chance of it happening, I'll get that motherfucker drunk and suck that dick. I mean, I would respect his boundaries and his orientation. <laughs> M -m -m move on. Is, if you have, if there, if, if you're, if there are unfulfilled expectations inside of a friendship, then mm -hmm. it's always going to hold that friendship back. You right? mean like, like how you I have... expect you to be on time for shoots? Honey, look. What? Uh, listen, listen. I miss Booby. How I expect your internet to stay put for once? Listen, don't try me, bitch. No, you've been learned. I fresh, you've been learned. At, at, at nine fifteen this morning. To, to, to go pick up laundry and take a shower and get my act together and watch the material and do my research. This whole day has been about this shoot. I have been on the clock all day, bitch. Did so I mention I'm recovering to, from to, major abdominal surgery? Listen, just because you got HIV, that honey, doesn't matter. How many homos got HIV, girl? No. You got Mom? Verona. You don't even got Corona, girl. You got Verona. It's the Italian version of Corona. <laughs> so, so, honey, not only do you taste like pepperoni, you going to die. Shake. They cut you open, but they give you an espresso. Trust. Girl, I ain't got HIV, bitch. You know I'm immune. Hmm. You know I'm immune, girl. My cell receptors can't catch it. Um, you um, better catch mm -hmm. it. You better catch it. Okay, listen. Let's move on. Matinga, the what next you, question. Yeah, the next question on Reddit. Matinga, what'd you come up with? So there were a couple really good ones, actually. Uh, but uh, let's see. Uh, and by the way, I didn't find any questions because I said to myself for once, let these bitches do the work. I said, do you, one of the questions I thought, I mean, it's not, it's not a, uh, 
you know. And so, do you struggle with being introverted and gay? And then there was a bunch of answers. I actually thought that was a lovely question because you would, you struggle with it being introverted, introverted and, gay. and gay. And let me let me preface this by you would think that the three people here, you have three fabulous gays who are you know fairly conversational and blah 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 blah. But you know, I can. I am a very introverted, shy person, and you might not know it. I'm socially awkward, but I have had moments of, of great, you know, personal uh, popularity, and I have had, uh, and I have learned to be more outgoing, and that's the thing. So yes, I have struggled with being gay and introverted and socially awkward. Booby, you're so still. Like you're, like you're, st when you're still, your stillness is so still. Like it's he's, almost like he's just introverted. Yeah, it's like exactly. Just like, exactly. So I have struggled with that, and the things that I have done is I have I'm a performer, I'm a dancer, I'm a singer, and and I have had to force myself to push myself out on stages, and so sometimes you just have to face your fear. Also, I am I have been a concierge and a front desk agent for many, many years, and even before that I did customer service. But once again, my, my job was that I had to deal with the public and I had to deal with the public at a very high level. And, and I, I chose those jobs because I knew that if I had a job in the back of the house, I would just become a hermit and never leave my house. Miss Michael has said to me on occasion, when are you gonna leave the house? Do you ever leave the house? I mean, not now, but in our years of knowing each other. You never leave the house. And so, but I have done, you know, my job forces me to deal with the public, forces me to deal with people, forces me not to be not only conversational, but to be a good conversationalist. So and, is your advice so to this homework. person, is your advice to this person to seek out employment that forces them to engage more? Well, the thing is, is force yourself to engage. Fake it till you make it. Yes, it's going to cause that anxiety response. Yes. What is yes. the wording of the question again? Can I hear it again? The, the, uh, it says, do you struggle with being introverted and gay? Hmm. So is the presumption that the person that wrote you know, the question is struggling with it? Because some people are introverted and completely yes. fine yes. with it. Some people are, are introverted and totally but fine it, with uh, it. Right. But I think he's struggling with it. The, the person who wrote the question. My and general advice also, is get involved with things that you love to do anyway, and you'll meet like-minded people, and that will sort of like lubricate the social situation a bit. I think. And you know, in the gay, in the faggotry scene, mm -hmm. it's very social. So if you feel socially awkward, it can be very difficult for you. Mm. You know, me and you, young lady, have stood as as interesting and as witty rock and raconteurs as we are, we have stood in the back of a party and ignored everybody. Like from our- from our, Every from the back, time. You know, and just, oh, look at her, look at her. And you know, and, she, and, we, and we don't mingle. And it's because, it's because we're, we're, you know, maybe we're afraid to mingle. I mean, ostensibly, we're also being bitchy and mean to everyone totally. in the room. Who was it that compared us to those two old Muppets in the balcony? Was it, yes! Was it Raymond yes. Osterby that said that? Was it it Raymond sounds like that? something Raymond would say. And it's so true. Just perched yeah, and judging. Yeah, in the back of your party. Perched and judging. And judging and drinking. Oh, merchandise. Perched and judging. Like that one time we went to, to, to Zell's party, and myself had that friend who had the eye condition, but like I thought she was cutting her eyes at me because she wouldn't look at me when I was staring straight at her. And I walked up to you, Michael, and I was like, that bitch is cutting eyes at me, and I'm going to go read her. You were like, Miss Thing, no, she has an eye condition. I can't look at you straight up. Oh Dude, we would cause a scene, Matinga. No. <laughs> right. right. She's blind, uh -huh. girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Is I that got what it was? Really not that she was being shady. Yeah. And I got some... every, you, would look, you would look at her straight on, and she'd be looking at you like this. <laughs> oh, shit. She was, was like, she was being so shady. And I just recently got some tea on her, some 20 year old tea. On her. Really? We know someone that had her, and I ain't gonna get into it on the, on the air. And it wasn't her boyfriend. Now, uh, Miss Booby, who was have... who was ah! right? Well, that's not Miss Thing. Let's come on now. Let's... Well, you could beat that. I have to now. Yeah. 
Um, had a big old dick. I always wanted to, I wanted to munch that dick. And he ate grapes time. out of Mizell's ass. Yes, he did, and that's why I never did it because <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't get past that little fat. Right, honey, they came out as wax fruit. <laughs> um, <laughs> Miss Booby, you got something to add to this introvert's question? No, I, I, I revel in your introvertedness. Be who you are. You know. There's nothing wrong with being introverted and gay. I'm sure that there's a large percentage of people who are. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you're introverted and it's bothering you, try and do something about it. But if, right. you're, but if it's not bothering you, pay it. Well, yeah. let me tell you, you know, back when we were nightclub and super duper heavy, there was always a part of me that was a little uncomfortable because that is not my speciality. Because, and I was conscious of it then, like, I'm not a dancer. I'm not a fashion queen. I'm not a looks bitch serving kata. Nightclubs are loud and visual. So for me, it was very hard to have a space to like be because I'm all about blah, 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 blah. And you can't blah, blah, blah in a nightclub. Do you know what I, I mean? Well, it's about carving out that space that makes you feel comfortable. I, oh, I was quite I, comfortable I, I, once the shit kicked in. Hello. Yeah. And I, and of course, me and <laughs> Miss Booby, we, you know, we were dancers and we were loved. But what one thing I remember is, do you remember Mizell used to go to Sound Factory and he would bring his earphones and he'd be, be off like, in a corner we, singing and like he'd be listening to the carpenters meanwhile like it's there's some hoes in this house there's some hoes yeah. in this house and he'd be like in a corner like listening to the carpenters it's like bitch what are you doing here right. <laughs> this, is, this is not right she better work yeah you remember that and time she, she broke that. her jaw remember she and she had her jaw wired shut had it wired for some reason, she she was embarrassed to tell me at the time the real reason that she fell into the subway tracks and broke her jaw was because he wasn't paying attention because he was singing to himself. And he just sort of like lost space oh and time God. and fell into the tracks and broke his jaw. I don't know why there was such an embarrassing factoid for him, which I'm sharing with the universe right now. Um, but yeah, right. yeah. But the bitch, the bitch lost 25 pounds. Factor. Lost 25 pounds? Trust. This lovely way to lose weight, lovely bitch. way to, and because I think she was, uh, her jaw was shut for like, I think six weeks. Six but weeks. I remember one night in a, just in a fit of desperation, he liquidated a slice of pizza in, <laughs> in you know, in a, in a blender. And he like tried to drink and he drank the pizza. And oh at some point when the jaws yeah. were wired shut, did ecstasy that same way. Now, can you imagine doing yeah. ecstasy with your jaw wired shut and your the jaw clenching? Oh. I mean, for me, that'd be like a fucking nightmare. No, no. Yeah. Well, the thing is that the ecstasy was not that we say to do ecstasy, don't do ecstasy, you know, although I will say that the ecstasy was quite different back then. Right? Yes. It was very, very different. And she, honey, she might have lived. She might have been lovely. Oh, I, I don't think I could. That wouldn't work for me, bitch. Mm -mm. Nope. Drug free since 93. Shut up. Booby, do you have anything to add to that? Like, no, you said, you know, be an introvert if that's what. Yeah, you just love. be, be, there's nothing wrong with being one. I think that you, the people get pressured to be an extrovert all the time. It RuPaul's drag race. Booby, are you an introvert or an extrovert? I am an introvert as well. I am an introvert as well. Yeah. I would rather stay home and not deal with people. And, you know, when I'm in, when, when I have to deal with people, I get panic attacks sometimes. Yes, 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 yes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Miss Honey, introvert or extrovert? Me? Yeah. I'm an introverted extrovert. Like, I have no problem yeah. being in a crowd and talking to people and kiki, ooh la 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 la. But yeah. I'm also very much about my privacy and I enjoy solitude because I entertain myself endlessly. Yeah. Like I'm okay being by myself yeah. and uh, I'm also okay in a crowd. And uh, yeah, I have that perfect balance, the yin and the yang, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm good guys. I'm good. Perched and judged. I have a, uh, not a question, but a, but a scenario that I think a lot of our viewers that some, some, if not a lot of our viewers have to deal with um a friend i will which will remain nameless asked me if it would be a good idea for another friend to stay with him he has space he has a big big house 
and this friend that needs to, that that needs a place to stay at the moment would it would be for a week however this other friend that needs a place to stay has been battling crystal meth and when dealing with this person you have to deal with his issues uh, and so he would be this friend who's asking me this question is asking me if it's a good idea to let this guy stay with him just for a week. And I said- Is your friend in recovery? Uh, the, the one that's asking me the question is not. Okay. So he doesn't, he hasn't, doesn't under, understand that there is drama to be when you invite someone, anyone into your house. Yep. And if you're inviting them into your house with the added drama of a drug addiction, um, you're going to get a lot more drama than you would you had signed on for, and that if it's just one week, it could it's going to be it's going to be hell to try to get them out after that week. So, right. it, uh, for for viewers who are watching this, it, it is just an interesting to be to be able to say the word no. No is a sentence. No with period is a sentence. And it's but okay it ha- to say no. It is yeah, okay to, have to say no. Healthy boundaries. Right. Healthy boundaries because people, you know, you love him, but you, but you also love your serenity and your peace. Your how your home is your your sanctuary, and if you're inviting that into your house, then you get what you get. Well, if you say yes to everything, your no is meaningless. Right. So, right. I think. I mean, how how good friends are they? Well, friends for 28 years. Mm. And, and the, the, the tweaker person is currently using? It's not 100%, but we, you hear from people all around the country mm. that this person is a tweaker. So all around the if country. it's one per, around the because this person gets around. Your friend could make a conditional like, yes, you can right. come stay for a week, but if I see any hint of shenanigans, bitch you out, and they have to stick to it. You could make it conditional, like Michael says, like, listen, right. you pull out the pipe in my house and you don't offer me some? <laughs> <laughs> the knife. <laughs> you pull out the pipe in my house and you're out. But, you know, but yeah, you can crash in my house for a week or two, but I've got to see that you are serious about, you know, trying to get your life together and that you're not sleeping all day and like up in my house, like, breaking my shit, because when you bring like an addict, like bad addict in your, especially a meth addict, they can destroy shit. They can steal shit. Steal shit. They, they, that's they one can, of the, yeah. one of the. They can break shit. Yeah. Because they're so. Gone. They're so but gone. One of the, one of the uh, complaints of people around the country is you can't leave a watch around, your, your brand new watch around without, you know, that kind of stuff. You're inviting it in your house. And if you, you are calling me and you're asking me my opinion, and I'm telling you that we now, you gotta be careful. We now. They already you know, know the answer. They know the answer. They yeah, it's kind know of, the answer. It sounds like no. It sounds like no with love. If it's a question between being kind and being right, you should always err always on the side of being kind. kind. However, that doesn't right. mean that you are a doormat. So exactly. your friend can be open to helping out this mutual friend with conditions and with right. eyes open. Right. I mean, maybe this is this person's chance to really get their shit together, you know, and not that that's because your friend's people responsibility. Get their shit together. People get their shit together and not that that yeah. the onus is on your friend, but. Yeah. Sometimes it, it's a, it's a pick and choose kind of way. You, you've got what to you call choose. me. A pick and oh, cho- pick and choose. It's a pick and any choose. Oh. Mama, picking any chews, girl. Is that a kind of um, um, is that a kind, kind of, of uh, penny candy? That's a kind of penny candy. Yeah, right? yo, yes. go to the store. Can you give me some of them picking any chews? Those picking any chews, please. Yeah, and some chocolate babies. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh no, girl. No, those are mama. real candies. I know. I don't. I'm sure they don't make them anymore. No. So, but there are people that you would say, yeah, look, I'll, like, I'll let you come. And, right. You know, and I'll, I'll, I'll right. you know, let's try and make this right. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a case by case. Yeah. It's, it's heartbreaking when it's a sister. A sister. A sister. And, and the sister is carrying, carrying. And everybody's telling you, don't you leave her in your house alone. 
uh, you know, much less let her stay with you. And well, that's you have to, to make that to. choice. You have to, you don't want to be an enabler um, and you don't want to ruin your serenity, but you know, you want your sister to be fine. So it's a tough choice. Well, now, let me ask you this about Miss Honey that's supposedly a mess. Is she cute? Is she a pass around party bottom? Oh, probably. Oh, oh you know her girl? Probably. Yeah. Oh, I don't know her, but because like, that I might know. tip the scales. Like it's a lonely time in the world. <laughs> it's a lonely time in the world, Mama. Mm. So that was Listen, not. A I know. I know. Many, many years ago, when I was struggling with the glass dick, there's you know the glass dick will do stuff to you. You know, you, you take a big hit, and they find you in some park, and you you know you you. Sitting on a fire hydrant. You're sitting on a fire hydrant. You've turned yourself into a living water feature. Yes. You've got sex raw loads in you now. And I don't know if you guys have heard, but we have merch. So you can go to teespring.com slash workshop. Slash workshop. Yes, but honey. To, get, to get you a perched and judging shirts. I love that one. Yes. I love that one. I got this you. bodega. I got those. The Plaza Queen. Plaza Queen. The Plaza Queen. What is a Plaza Queen? You're looking at three of them. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, well, a Plaza Queen, according to Michael, a, a Plaza to Michael, Queen is a West Coast version of a Pier Queen. Exactly. Uh, oh, darling, a West Coast version of a Pier Queen. Darling, she's a Plaza Queen. She's a Plaza Queen. Plaza yes. Queen. Pa Booby, have you I ever do, listened I to our theme song? I do love my t-shirt. Of course I have. Yeah. And I want to I wanna say, and this, and this isn't just salesmanship, the quality of my shirt is really, it's so yeah. soft. It's yes. so, so almost as soft as my gorgeous skin. It's very soft. It's high quality. The print, Miss Booby, you're going cross eyed. What's up, bitch? Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, viewers, thank you for tuning in to this really substantial episode of Homework. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I don't know who I am. I don't know what I am. But I do know because I'm wearing this t shirt that I'm a Plaza Queen. Yes. And I think my name is Matinga. I am Mike Diamond. And I'm Booby. You've been learnt. learnt.